Hello, everybody. My name is Al DePaulo, and I'm the Partner Products Manager. And today, I wanted to take a look at open pocketing, pocketing options, pocketing, pocketing, pocketing. Um, you know, I've been really busy over the last couple of weeks and really haven't had a chance to uh, uh, create any videos. And there's a bunch of different really good topics that have come up. But uh, with the East Tech Show right around the corner, it's just been difficult to... Um, have the time to really get in and, and create some video. So today I wanted to look at this sample file. It came up in a thread and uh, there's just a, a part here. And what we want to do is uh, we want to pocket it out and I want to talk about some of the characteristics of the um, of the opening po uh, open pocketing. So I have the part set up. Uh, I have my geometry set up. One of the things, if you look at this, our outside shape is a solid line. And when you come in here to your pocketing feature, you have um, a couple of different patterns to choose from. You know, you have your zigzag pocket, you have your offset pocket in, you have your offset pocket out, and you have your advanced pocket. Now, I want to stress that the advanced pocket is used for open pocketing, where one or more sides of your outside boundary is open. So, uh, in this example, if we wanted to keep the tool inside of this area this outside shape you can see it's a solid line you can see we have that selected really the only patterns we would want to choose would either be zigzag offset in offset out so if we do a zigzag for instance let me uh, drop down my tool size um, let me set multiple depths we'll go ahead and compute this you can see the tool is staying inside this outside boundary and it's not being generated in some areas because well there's just not enough room for the tool to fit in there uh, we can change our pattern to you know offset in offset out and we can recompute and again you can see there's just really not enough room uh, to come in here and really we want to remove the material to leave that shape as a boss or sticking up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our geometry now I know I've reviewed this in the past but I just want to go over it again we're gonna go to selection mode we will chain select our outside shape so that's a shift uh, left click, we'll right click, modify attributes, line style, and we'll change this to a dotted line. Okay? Now, the dotted line lets the software know the tool can pass through that area. And when we reselect this geometry, and now we change this to an advanced pocket, and we compute, you'll see that the tool is starting off the part. Now, uh, after reading through a couple of these threads, I found out the default uh, amount in which the tool starts off the part is 0 0.05, okay? So, um, if you wanted it to be greater than that amount, then you could obviously offset your outside shape. But one of the questions that has come up has to do with when the tool comes down to cut. Now, these... The dotted lines are uh, rapid moves, and the solid lines are links, and you can see that they're purple. But um, you know, you can see that the tool is going to start off the part, and then it's going to come in, come around, and it's going to go in this direction here, and then it rapids over and it comes back down. And and what uh, a couple of users have commented on is that the tool is rapiding to its depth, and this is true. It will rapid to its depth if we look at our code here you're going to see there is a G00 Z minus uh, 0.25. So it does rapid to depth, but it will only rapid to depth when it is outside of the part. You know, so it rapids down the depth and then it comes in on the side, which is really what you would want. You really wouldn't want it to feed down here because that would take longer than necessary. And uh, you definitely wouldn't want it to... Um, you wouldn't want it to rapid uh, while it's in the part, but the way the algorithm is set up, it, it, it doesn't do that. If you are experiencing that, uh, either you're using an advanced pocket that has a 
uh, solid outside shape or a closed boundary on the outside shape or not dotted lines on the outside shape or you have some other geometry condition that um, it, it, you're really just dealing with bad geometry which uh, I'll have to talk about another time that's non-tangent uh, non-contiguous or non-trim geometry all right it's not always easy to tell when it's bad geometry but basically the toolpath doesn't work so you know that it's bad so anyways uh, you will uh, see that the tool is gonna wrap it down but it will do this outside of the part and work its way around um, you know, again, uh, open pocketing is a great strategy. Uh, you can use it in a lot of different scenarios. And uh, again, when it comes to uh, shapes like this, um, you know, if your tool's wrapping down, it, it will be wrapping down off the part. If it's not, you really need to take a look at your geometry. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to review today and um, look forward to talking to you guys some more. Thank you so much.